I'm joined now by Aaron Brown, who is the Chief Risk Officer of AQR Capital Management, a uh, quant hedge fund. I hear you were, uh, prior to this, a banker. At, at Morgan Stanley, yes. Stanley, now a uh, much more quantitative world than now. Uh, I was pretty quantitative at Morgan Stanley, too, but I was out of the mainstream there. Now I'm right in the middle of the pack. Um, but a very different um, view of risk management, I guess, than... Uh, well, it's a simpler world. Um, we try to do at Morgan Stanley what we do at AQR, but it's much more it's much more complicated organization. So you have specialists, and the reason I left Morgan Stanley primarily was I was getting to be too much of a specialist. I've always wanted to be a risk manager to do the whole decision from start to finish, and there's really one person at Morgan Stanley gets to do that, and everybody else gets to do little slices of the problem. Great, and it wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, in, uh, we were chatting uh, earlier and um, you mentioned that one of your you know, the big questions that you're pondering on is the dealing with uncertainty. And, um, yeah, we're in an extremely uncertain period. Uh, regulation is a big part of that. We don't know what the regulations will be. Um, and we're, we're, we don't even know when the regulations will come, which is kind of disconcerting. There's uh, Every couple of months we've had a fire drill, a new regulation is going to come in in, you know, in January and July or something and it's not really clear what the rules are going to be and we have to be prepared for it and that's a tremendous, we've been putting tremendous effort in preparing for these things. So far we haven't had a major change but, uh, you know, a rumor will sweep around that you're going to, you won't be able to trade this kind of swap without clearing it in this day or this, you won't be able to face this counterparty. Um, um, and so far none of them have bitten, so we can't actually complain of any harm from it other than the, just not knowing what's going to happen. Uh, but it's not just the regulation, it's the economics of the financial system. We don't know what kind of institutions will survive. Are we going to be dealing with big commingled bank, investment bank, broker dealers? Are we going to be dealing with specialty institutions? Are we going to get our liquidity from market makers, from high frequency traders? Uh, what kind of trading is going to be allowed? Uh, what sort of investment vehicles? We, when I started at AQR four years ago, we had hedge funds. Now we've got hedge funds, public mutual funds, USITS funds, um, and each one of them comes with its own set of regulations. If we knew which one was going to be the dominant investment, we could concentrate on that, but we don't. So you've got to have one of each. Uh, that makes risk management much more difficult uh, because uh, we're not we can't decide what we're good at and then go do it in the best way possible. We kind of have to make sure we're doing a little bit of everything. And that's where you get your big risks. Um, a number of people have um, argued that uh, co hedge fund customers are a lot more sophisticated than your average uh, bank customer, especially um, a retail bank customer. And that uh, because of the sophistication of uh, a hedge fund customer, that it might require a, a lower level of regulation and that regulation might be superfluous. <laughs> so what's well, your take on that? I mean, I, I, I go even farther than that. Uh, hedge funds existed in the first place because people didn't like mutual fund regulation. I mean, there's no, there's no such thing as a hedge fund. A hedge fund is a investment advisor who chooses not to play by the SEC rules and, and, and legally um, and organizes offshore. Um, now you can actually organize onshore and do it, but um, some investors feel that the restrictions on liquidity, on transparency, and so forth um, on a public mutual fund just aren't worth that they hurt return. And that's definitely true for some kinds of investment strategies. Uh, when we package our strategies into a public mutual fund, we've got to cut the leverage, we've got to cut the aggressiveness, we've got to get rid of the liquid stuff, and that hurts return. Now, uh, it's an investor's choice which one to take. If you regulate hedge funds, all you do is somebody's going to open up something else offshore that, that's, you know, unregulated again, because whatever regulations you put in place are going to cost some money. I mean, they're, they're an investor tax. They may be worth it to the investor, they may not. But somebody's going to uh, um, go around it. So all we'll do is have to invent a new word for, you know, hedge hedge funds or uber hedge <laughs> funds or something. So you definitely feel that the U.S. regulators as of now should maybe take a step back. I, I, I because, would, then, I mean, the counter-argument that has been made is that uh, the hedge fund industry as an industry is systematically important. You know, take the CIFIs, I know um, large institutions 
could, would naturally fit the description of what a Sufi yeah. is, uh, a, a large, a medium-sized hedge fund on its own might not be, uh, might not pose a systemic risk, but the argument is that um, a lot of these strategies are common to a number of hedge funds and that a, a shock to one hedge fund would most likely be a shock to the industry and hence become a, a systemic risk. Yeah, and I, I think the problem here is a failure to distinguish regulatory purview. If you, if you just say up front, um, these are the institutions we regulate and these ones we don't. If you invest in a regulated institution and something happens, you can come crying to us. If you invest in an unregulated one, that you chose that. I, I feel, for example, the SEC got far too much uh, criticism for the Bernie Madoff uh, problem because mm -hmm. Bernie Madoff wasn't running a regulated mutual fund. If he had been, the SEC would have been all over him day one. People chose to go around that and, and, and to not get that regulation. Where you should regulate hedge funds is in the investors. Uh, for people, public pension funds, you tell them if you think hedge funds are too dangerous, you tell them not to invest in hedge funds or mm -hmm. only hedge funds that do certain things. Uh, if you think banks are extending too much credit to them, you tell them not to extend credit or to reserve more capital or something like that. Those rules are all perfectly sensible on the regulated entity. But it's always tempting as a regulator to say, well, I'm having trouble getting my regulated entities to do what I want, so I'll just go one regulate step further and regulate the provider. And that's just, you know, it's philosophically wrong. And, and, and you I end up with a bad result that way. So we're not complaining about, or I'm not complaining, I'm only speaking for myself, not the fund. I'm not complaining about the total level of regulation, but all the entities to which it is applied. I frankly don't think the SEC has any legal basis to tell groups of private individuals who get together how they can invest. If an individual can do it, why can't 10 individuals get together and form a partnership to do it? Um, now, that said, AQR is really no longer a hedge fund. I mean, we run some hedge funds, but we're really a diversified asset manager. So we're going to be under the regulatory well, either way. No so I'm not really defending my own uh, my own company here, um, but I'm saying we need these independent hedge funds. If somebody wants to just start a pure hedge fund, not have any ERISA money, not have any, um, uh, not get large credit from investment banks from regulated institutions, uh, there's no reason in the world it should be regulated. Okay, and uh, a last question, I'd be interested in your thoughts on this. So as, as a regulator um, you know, coming out of the crisis, uh, one of the you know, the big problems we had was the lack of information of non-regulated entities. So now I'm trying to you know, draw a line between regulating an entity and being aware of risks within an entity even though we might not be uh, regulating it. So the hedge fund industry is a fairly large industry. Um, whether we regulate it or not, I think it, it would make sense for us to have access to some information. How do you feel that uh, the industry might res you know, react to a, such a request. Would there be a fear of a Trojan horse that this would be the first step towards regulation? Or well, we're, we're, we've already <laughs> taken 10 or 12 steps for regulation, so that's not the issue. Um, I'm all for transparency. I absolutely believe in transparency, and I don't think there's any problem with forcing people to disclose positions, uh, short, long. Um, I'm, and I'm pretty open of, you know, the, put the delay you want in, and, and, and I mean, you can have a fairly short delay, you can have fairly granular um, um, disclosure, as long as everybody plays by the same rules. And really it should apply to individuals as well. It should be entirely by the size of the account. Uh, there are two problems I have with it. One, it's applied at the fund manager level, which makes no sense. So we might be investing a million dollars for some small pension fund somewhere, and why, you know, that that is not a systemically important investment. That's not something everybody in the world needs to know. Um, but we're also reducing $10 billion for somebody else. Um, and because of that, we have to disclose everybody's position, not just the large positions. And it really should be at the fund level. That's where the true disclosure should be. Uh, the second thing, I've been working in this for 20 years, and yeah, everybody wants more information, and everybody thinks it's simple. The hard part isn't getting people to comply. The hard part is getting meaningful information that can be aggregated in, in, in a way and given to you in a form that's useful in a time frame you can use it. And that is barely possible, even in an organization like Morgan Stanley, that's impossible, just for, just for Morgan Stanley. And there's no, inform, you know, there's no barrier there, we're all one company, we're all trying mm -hmm. to do it. Um, but you can't. To do it for the entire financial system is just a pipe dream. So rather than saying we need more information to enforce the regulations, we got to go back and say let's make some regulations that don't require information we can't get. Great. Well, Aaron, thank you very much. It was great talking to you. Thank you.